Minh Thúy xin kính chào quý vị hôm nay thứ Sáu, 21 tháng 6, 2024. Đến với VATV hôm nay gồm có phỏng vấn đặc biệt và nhạc lá bồ đề. Kính thưa quý vị, trong khung cảnh chuyển đổi mãnh liệt năm 1962, những thay đổi xảy ra không những chỉ ở thành phố với các cuộc biểu tình xuống đường mà còn ở các miền xa thành phố như là miền Trung. Ngoài việc đối phó trực tiếp với Cộng sản, chính quyền ông Diệm còn phải đối phó với những mưu mô đảo chính trong thành phố và quanh Sài Gòn. Những lo lắng của chính quyền về việc đảo chính đã ảnh hưởng thế nào đến các quyết định quân sự? Năm 1962, như đã trình bày trong kỳ trước, khi được biệt phái về miền Trung, thì ông Frank Scotton đã trực tiếp chứng kiến những hoạt động chiêu hội của Đại úy Nguyễn Tùy. Sau khi chứng kiến, ông đã về ở luôn với những người lính của Đại úy Nguyễn Tùy để theo dõi kỹ hơn các hoạt động chiêu hồi. Khi đã tạm quen thuộc với địa hình thì ông Frank Scotton đã có một quyết định táo bạo. Ông quyết định tự mình đi vào sâu những con lộ trong rừng ở thung lũng An Lão để tìm hiểu tình hình. Đây là một quyết định khó hiểu và dường như quyết định duy nhất của ông. Ông Frank Scotton muốn tìm hiểu gì trong các con đường đó và tại sao phải đi một mình trong rừng rậm và ở lại vào ban đêm. Ngoài việc theo dõi các hoạt động chiêu hồi thì ông Frank Scotton còn chứng kiến những quyết định kỳ quặc trong việc tái phối trí các sư đoàn miền Trung, những quyết định hoàn toàn gần như bất lợi cho miền Nam. Giữa lúc các cuộc biểu tình lan rộng ở miền Trung thì ông cũng nói chuyện với dân chúng ở miền Trung để tìm hiểu sự suy nghĩ của họ về những biến động xuống đường của Phật giáo, những suy nghĩ của người dân ở cả phía Công giáo lẫn phía Phật giáo. Trong kỳ phỏng vấn này thì Minh Thúy mời quý vị tiếp tục theo dõi tình hình biến loạn ở miền Trung khi các biến cố biểu tình đang lan dần ra, cùng những quyết định quân sự kỳ quặc của chính quyền miền Nam khi phải đối phó với các cuộc biểu tình lan tràn đó. Xin mời quý vị tiếp tục theo dõi các công tác của ông Frank Scotton ở miền Trung khi ông tiến sâu vào vùng Bình Định, thung lũng An Lão trong phần 4 phỏng vấn sau đây do Phan Lê Dũng, Võ Thành Nhân và Minh Thúy thực hiện. What's the point? What's the point for walking the trails? I wanted to see who who else was on those trails. Now, uh, would I have done that if I was older and more experienced? Uh, maybe not. But I was young at the time, and I thought, and I remember. And nobody ever told you to walk the trails or anything like that. It's completely no. Initial. Nobody told me to, but nobody told me not to. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, you know, the, I did, we had all, the old French maps at that point, and you could see the, the movement of trails from place to place. So I thought to myself, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to do that. And, and Tui gave me some advice, and even my, uh, my landlord. Uh, they weren't against it at all as you walked the trail. They wouldn't give you they any warning. Well, Tui said, you know, you, you, you be very, very careful and. Uh, Even the landlord, uh, you know, uh, said, you know, be careful out there. But he helped me go to the market and and get a local mosquito net and uh, diet, and then uh, and then told me, uh, you know, that even if you're not bothered by mosquitoes, he said, if you if you're anywhere, you know, don't sleep on the trail. Get off the trail. Get under some bushes. Pull that mosquito net over you. Uh, You know, disappear into the. So actually, your that. experience and your training is not actually by the American, but very much by the Vietnamese who were in that uh, local area. By by Vietnamese and uh, by kind of a you know a, a mental inclination on my part, calculation. So. So so anyway, as I as as the years passed, and you know, there's a tendency to befriend those who think like you. Um, and so um, I was, I was making friends with other Americans, but they tended to be people who thought the same way as I did. Now, you know, jumping ahead to the uh, that nineteen sixty three episode, um, uh, I had I had seen from the spring onward that there were real uh, social 
meaning foundational problems for politics, difficulties in central Vietnam uh, with respect to the you Catholic, be more con the be Catholic more concrete Buddhist on, issue. Uh, uh, you yeah. be more concrete of what you see in the, as you see as, the, as something almost like the beginning of an upheaval, is what well, you say? Well, I could see that in the spring of 63. For instance, uh, the Arvin units in An Lao Valley were withdrawn from An, the An Lao Valley uh, for troop re-education. And uh, I, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was a, a, a mistake. And sure enough, at the end of 1963, I think in December of 63 or January of 64, the first district Republic of Vietnam to be completely taken over by the communists was An Lao in Binh Dinh province. And did they you just, know mm -hmm. just who made, who made the decision to pull back the, the troop? Do you know? Um, well, I think it was by the, on the part of the government, uh, the government of President Siem, to, because they thought they needed, the, the soldiers needed indoctrination uh, because you had the problem between uh, uh, the government and Buddhists. I wouldn't say Catholics and Buddhists because in, in Quinion, where I, I talked a lot with uh, uh, Catholics in the seminary and, and Buddhists in the, in the pagodas, the, um, the feeling was, a, 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 in general, on both parts, deep regret that this had come to, come to pass. But the, the, I think that the with respect to the 9th Division, at least, which at that time was located in Binh Dinh province, the, uh, the, the problem is the 9th Division commander saw it was keeping troop loyalty. And so they, they, they pulled back and they did a lot of troop indoctrination. And then they just let it open like that? In, well, in there was that, but then another factor was that the government, the Saigon, uh, whether Americans or Vietnamese or whatever organization and agency, Saigon always seemed to me to be most sensitive to developments in the provinces around Saigon. So there was already a plan to trans... The 9th Division had been raised and trained in Binh Dinh. There was a plan to transfer it to the Mekong Delta. And for what reason? Well because they, they were excessively, well, I wouldn't, maybe not excessively, they were more concerned about deteriorating security in the provinces close to Saigon than they were in elsewhere. And there was a developing plan to transfer the 25th Division from Quang Ai further south. It is the first republic you're talking about. Are they still yeah, worrying yeah, about these problems? But they were already planning. So when I met, uh, when pr I had a conversation with President Lodge in Dalat there uh, at, the, at the end of October, I think it was October 28th, um, the, you know, part of my con conversing with him was to try to explain to him what a disastrous decision this was to uh, be moving, moving the Ninth Division from Central Vietnam to the Delta and uh, planning for the 25th Division to later move from Central Vietnam to the Delta. Mm -hmm. That if, if they needed two additional divisions in the Delta, raise the divisions, equip and train them in the Delta. You know, but don't create a vacuum in a critical part of the country. Uh, so you, do, you feel like because of the uh, uh, so-called lack of understanding of the front, or do they really uh, care more about Saigon? Is it uh, the decision is being made by the government or by the uh, military side here to move the uh, troops from the uh, central I, to the I south? I think that the, the, the decision to move those two divisions to the uh, area south, west and south of Saigon was a decision that uh, executive both, branch? Both both MACV and um, the, the government of Vietnam kind of agreed upon. I don't think that the Americans told the Vietnamese to do it, um, but I think that the Americans didn't argue against doing it. See, the, the, the problem was, we, you, if they needed two divisions there, as I saw it, they should raise, they should raise two new divisions. 
But on the American side, maybe then they were thinking about, uh, well, how do we finance that? How do we equip that? With, you know, how do we go about doing it? But uh, it it was a it was a non-political decision um, made in late 1963 that had disastrous consequences. And you said by that uh, time you, you did not have a, a lot of uh, so-called invasion and attack from the north. That's why it's possible to think in that term, which was uh, later proved. Like well, you had people. You had you had people. I I I was introduced to a guy, uh, a Banar tribesman that I mentioned in my book, and was captured in Nankai and had been wounded in the foot. Um, he had been relocated to the north and now he had re-infiltrated and uh, despite being wounded, a lot of self-confidence and pretty, pretty sharp-minded guy. So there, there were people coming in but you did not have, you did not have uh, battalion size units or regimental size units coming in yet. Um, but you did, you, you, you did have a lot of activity. Uh, in, in central Vietnam and elsewhere in Vietnam, and I... Do you, do you think that the uh, American side by that time was fully informed of this, or it just you people in front and trying to find out the problem that sends this, but not the uh, central office? Uh, I, I think that, generally speaking, the, uh, on the American side, we were not as well informed as we should have been. I thought, in some respects, the embassy was functioning as any embassy would in any other part of the world, mm -hmm. and I, I thought that I thought that embassies, I thought that I thought we needed a different approach, but we weren't uh, we weren't getting it. Mời quý vị đón xem phần 5 phỏng vấn ông Frank Scotton, nhân viên cao cấp Sở Ngoại vụ Hoa Kỳ, sẽ được phát hình vào tối thứ sáu ngày 28 tháng 6. 2024